I have always been fascinated with 3D printing. Just being able to download a schematic off the internet and having a physical object, like this cute little owl, <laughs> appear out of what seems to be thin air. And this could be some small, useful object that you just need to replace or use to finish up a project, or all the way up to using basically the same type of technology to 3D print an entire house. It's definitely fascinating, but I've always had this misconception that doing something like this is either too time consuming or too difficult to figure out. And it was shortly after I set this guy up that all of those theories I had were just completely disproven. In this video, I'm going to be kind of going over my process from being a complete noob, not even knowing some of like the basic terminology for what it is I was looking at, to now. Granted, compared to probably a lot of you, I'm still a super noob and I do have a lot to learn. And then I'm going to note here that this video would not have been possible without AliExpress as they are the ones that actually sent over this printer to review, which we will be getting into a little bit more once we introduce this printer. This is the AnyCube Cube. Cobra Max, an absolute big boy of a printer featuring a 400 by 400 millimeter by 450 meter printing surface. And it has a lot of cool features, including an automated leveling feature that can automatically compensate for any hotbed unevenness. Both leveling and printing can be done with the press of the button. It has double thread Z access moving parts to reduce printing wobbles and has a maximum advertised speed of 180 millimeters per second. And that's with an average of about 80. I'm going to put some technical specifications on the screen now. But in short, it also features filament runout detection. It has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And the actual panel here features a touch display. Now, to be quite frank, this whole setup here is a little dramatic, especially for the size. If, if you get this one, you are not going to need to upgrade for quite a while. This specific one here comes in about $500 to $600, give or take, and there are smaller and cheaper models within the Cobra line of printers if you do want to kind of get in at a lower price. So with that, back onto my journey here. When the box arrived, it was an absolute behemoth, but it was packaged very well and nothing in it was damaged at all from shipping. And in the box, we have a bunch of stuff, the support bars, all the tools and parts you need to put it together, our glass base, the frame, the filament holder, screen, the actual part of the base that moves here, and really anything else we need to 3D print anything such as little pre-included micro SD cards and USBs. We also got some filament too. We got red filament, as you can tell. But it did ship with a little bit of white filament, which is definitely appreciated. And I mean, in here we got extra pieces, such as an extra nozzle, USB drive. We have a USB for plugging it directly into the computer. We got some grease, and really any other parts and extra pieces that you're going to need. So now onto the setup process for this thing. Luckily, it has a well put together assembly instruction guide here. Lists out all the parts that were included. The very first thing I had to do was install this frame onto the base. And overall, everything was pretty easy. It was two screws on each side. Tighten that down and literally the hardest part is out of the way. Next, we got some support rods that we went ahead and installed. They're a little finicky. You kind of got to unscrew them a bit, get them just right, and then screw them down. And it actually does say that in the instructions here. Next was to mount this touch screen. Really easy. Three screws. If I move the camera just a little bit, you can see the filament holder there. It doesn't actually have any screws. It just kind of rests on there, which is actually kind of nice because it does stick out a little bit. So it's easy just to pop that off. When it comes to all the cords and everything, there really wasn't much. There's, it even shows you one, two, three, four, five, six different things you have to plug in. And they are just relatively close to where they need to actually be plugged into. We have a mount back there that we needed to install to keep our printer head cords in place. And then from there, it was really just mounting or zip tying a couple things or some big white zip ties underneath we needed to pull out. And then boom, it was completely ready to go for us. And the first thing you have to do when you actually get it all set up is leveling. Luckily, like we mentioned earlier, the leveling is really easy as a whole feature that does it automatically. It touches down on every single one of these squares. And then when it finishes up, you could go ahead and load in the filament. Now, like I said, we do have a little bit of white filament that comes with it, but if you're going to be playing around with this, you're going to want to order some more. This does support just about any filament on the market, but any cube, of course, has their own. I had a big old bundle of red, which is what's currently installed on the machine. And just like with the leveling feature, the loading filament feature is also pretty self-explanatory, and it kind of walks you through the process. So at this point, everything was set up, and we can print something, and again, Within the instruction manual, it shows us how to print a file, particularly 
this one, that is pre-included on that little SD card. All you do on the touch screen, you hit print, and with the actual SD card in there, metal side facing up, you will see the OWL file there and it will immediately start printing this. And this is a nice little preview. You can see how well it does. I mean, of course you could still tell it's 3D printed, but just the detail on this thing is really remarkable for just a sample print. Now, of course, you'll only be satisfied with samples for so long. I wanted to go ahead, scour the internet, download something and print it for myself. Again, I had no idea what I was doing. So thanks to a couple folks on Reddit and particularly a, a YouTube video I found covering the Cobra printers and how to set them up, we were able to do just that. First, what I did, I have a Pop! OS on my system now, so I went and downloaded Cura from Altimaker, which is seems to be the recommended one, even by Anycubic themselves. And unfortunately, this is a relatively new printer, so there wasn't just a preset for this already. So with that tutorial, I kind of found a workaround to get it set up. I'll link to that down below. It's definitely worth checking out if you do want to get this thing. And the very first thing I tried to print was an asset from Ratchet & Clank. I went through, played with all the settings, made sure everything was as it needed to be, and I started printing and I realized it was going to take a rather long time. I made it a little too big. I mean, this is the point where I stopped it, which it is pretty easy to stop. You just hit stop while it's printing and it'll kind of wrap up, move itself out of the way, and then you could pry off your uh, unfinished pieces here. Which, by the way, this is the uh, cube setup here for uh, filling in the insides of these things. So from there, I decided to try something different. I got this little uh, boat guy right there. Very high detailed. Again, I played around with the settings. I actually increased the print speed because I wanted to try that out. Uh, I would find out that um, I should have had it go a little slower, should have made the thing a little bit bigger. I'm going to play some clips from earlier. I definitely have some uh, learning and work to do. It went ahead and spewed out some of the uh, filament off to the side. It's completely a uh, my bad and I'll figure it out type situation. But then the printing began. Now this section of the video, I just want to get down here real quick. I have no filters or anything on, just so you can kind of see how loud it is. It's really not that loud at all. At this point, it's been running for just about an hour. I'm printing off that little boat that you guys saw earlier. We are at, we're at about 30% when it comes to the progress of this specific print. And you could also see it back there in the uh, software. But while we're kind of listening to that ambient noise, one thing I wanted to talk about is the features while it is printing. It's really cool because a lot of the stuff on the screen you can interact with. And if we look over here, we can see the file name, the print rate. Right now I have it set to 120% because within the software, I set it at right about 80 millimeters per second, which is the average. And because of this, I'm able to boost it up and I could actually show you. You can see the speed it's running there. And if I go to settings, we have the print rate. I could go ahead and drop this to, let's say 80%. So that's gonna be a 40% decline. And there you go, it's now slowed down. So it's really cool. You could actually manipulate and change that right on here. You also have some other settings such as the fan speed so I can manually cut that in half. And you notice it is a, it's a little quieter now. Personally, I wouldn't recommend that. Full speed fan is good, keeps it nice and cool. Additionally, we have the Z offset here so you could change that if you need to. And within settings, there is a, a light switch so you can enable and disable that light. I'm gonna bump our fan back up. And of course, on this screen, we could also see the time, the progress, the temperature, so we can see the EO as well as the bed temperature, where it's at and where the target is. And then of course, you could always pause and stop your print from here. And speaking of this little boat, we are now in the future and it is about 99% complete. The thing with this little boat is it was supposed to be a big model, high detail, and I shrunk it down and sped it up just to see if this printer could keep up. And all it really has left that it's finishing up is the little horn that is actually on top of the boat. And there we go, I believe it's about done. We got a little string left. I like how it's bringing it forward and uh, presenting it to me. <laughs> the finish time for this guy was two hours and 55 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now, to help our audio a bit, we're gonna power her down. Again, it's cool with all the little tools they provide. A little scraper help us get this up. It seems to be much easier to remove these when it's still warm. Otherwise, it does take a lot of brute force. And there we go. So this right here is our finished product. And honestly, it looks pretty good. We can see in some of the really fine detail, especially up here where uh, 
and on this little light where slowing it down would have been beneficial or where printing just a bigger model would have been much better. And do contrast this to the uh, owl that we printed out earlier that came on the SD card. This thing turned out absolutely remarkable. What I'm gonna do real quick is clean this guy up to see if we could get this looking good. And even just plucking at it for a little bit with this pre-included tool that we get, it's already looking a whole heck of a lot better. So just to kind of show you the difference, what I'm gonna do is overnight, I'm gonna print a larger version of that a little slower, just so you can see what this printer truly can produce. And side by side, we can see that it is looking remarkable. The larger print has much more detail. There's very limited to no imperfections. And that's just because I slowed it down a little bit and actually printed a model that was uh, of the proper size. Which I mean, for this thing, you could really print some big things. I don't have enough uh, filament to print some of the things that I'd like to, but one of the things about discovering this is spending the time browsing various websites and just seeing some of the things that you can create on your own with a 3D printer like this. Ultimately, I have a whole heck of a lot to learn, but just this experience using it over the last couple days has truly opened my eyes to the huge amount of use cases and potential for these. And it really did not take me nearly the effort that I thought it would. And if you're somebody who's never 3D printed anything, that's what I would hope you would get out of this. This is not difficult. It takes a couple hours of research to get your first thing going. And like we saw, I got this beautiful owl just off of the step-by-step -step instruction manual that came with this product. Watch this product if you haven't gotten the point by now. I would highly recommend it. If you can't afford the higher price, the extra space and real estate you get, just to have the availability to use it is awesome. But of course, even in the same class or the same Cobra line, you're really gonna get some top-notch stuff, especially at this price point. But why pay more when you could take advantage of the AliExpress Double Eleven Global Shopping Festival? From November 1st to November 12th, you could save up to 90% site-wide. This includes beauty items, outdoor gear, household goods, and all the tech your heart desires. And if you want to save even more on any of those items, or even this printer right here, you can use my exclusive code, TechHut25, to take $25 off of your order of $165 or more. So make sure you head down below, check out those links to see the current price of the Cobra we have right here, as well as the 011 shopping event. And again, to end off this video, thank you to AliExpress for sending this over. I truly appreciate it. And you should go ahead, check the links down below once again to check out their Double Eleven event. Save some big bucks on just about everything, including this. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye.